Hello everyone, uh, Mr. Snow here, or Lawrence, depending on what channel you're watching this video on. Speaking of channels, a bit of a preempt, a uh, bit of a preamble here. If you're wondering why on the Mr. Snow channel it's been kind of dead for the last couple months, it's because I did start up three other channels, only one of which I've actively been keeping up with. I started up a channel for Final Fantasy XIV, Dead by Daylight, and Yu-Gi-Oh! specific content. I'm not worried about the uh, Dead by Daylight or, or uh, Final Fantasy content. Uh, I think I pretty much stopped playing both of those games at this point. Um, but the Yu-Gi-Oh! channel, I've been putting a lot of time and effort into. This is a Yu-Gi-Oh! video, so I'm going to plug that channel. It is Lawrence space YGO. Just give that a search. It's a lot of uh, remote dual locals. And this video will be mirrored onto that channel, or if you're watching this video on that channel, uh, go check out my Mr. Snow channel. That's where my general uh, uh, video game, movie kind of stuff just kind of generically is in the attempts to uh, kind of structure that schizophrenic channel right there. Anyway, let's get into this. So, yeah, I found myself playing significantly more Yu-Gi-Oh! than Pokemon over the last year. And for a while there, I couldn't quite put my finger on it. I think at this point I finally have. And of course, this is going to be a mix of a lot of subjective feeling with a bit of objective facts about the games, but mostly that pesky personal opinion. That said, why I don't personally think Pokemon is such a great franchise to spend my time on anymore is going to be, by and large, my personal opinion. I say that because I know some folks out there have a religious-like fervor for these children's games. Just don't take any beef I have with these per franchises personally. Anyway, let's begin. Okay, so Pokemon pretty much doesn't come out with anything new except for one big drop every couple of years. The big drop being a new game. Sure, they'll give away a new legendary or something every now and then, but that's a bit of code over the internet, and most people just hack those anyway. Contrast this with even just the Lost Art promos going on at the time of this video, and I've at least got something physical in my hand. Sure, it's a bit of cardboard I had to spend $30 in product to get, but it's at least something tangible. Going along with that notion, Yu-Gi-Oh! adds what are pretty much new expansions to the game every couple months or so. Instead of going almost a year on end with a stagnating metagame, we at least get new toys to play with every couple months, whether or not they make a significant impact. This does a better job of getting people's attention and keeping them interested in the product at hand. Because after all, these are both products. Now granted, Pokemon has way more other stuff that it markets, heck I think the games themselves amount to a quarter of their total revenue, but for someone like me that's not so much interested in the toys and other stuff, well, I get one game every couple years, and that's that. Okay, this one should be a no-brainer. Konami focuses far more on the competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! metagame than Game Freak does Pokemon. And to their credit, this gen, Game Freak definitely paid more attention to competitive play than previously. I'm pretty sure with the release of Crown Tundra, you can now take any wild-caught Pokemon and manipulate IVs, EVs, and even get them their hidden abilities now. That takes a ton of grind off the player, but it's still present. The grind in Yu-Gi-Oh! is different. If you're foolish, you'll go out and buy pack after pack after pack after pack until you get what you want. Or, you can be smart and go to Troll and Toad or TCG Player or something. It is significantly much more cost efficient to buy singles than to buy packs, but I will say that brings up something else. In a certain light, while Pokemon is a grind fest, you could consider Yu-Gi-Oh! something akin to one of those mobile games where you can pay real money to speed up progress. Pretty much if you buy packs en masse, it's because you're trying to resell whatever singles you may get. Yu-Gi-Oh! also thankfully regularly updates their ban list. Whether or not I entirely agree with what gets on the list is another discussion, but Konami at least attempts to balance their meta. Generally, what they try to do is if something is being abused heavily in decks it isn't meant for or enables FTKs, they nix it. Think Sky Striker Engage. That thing searched out Hornet drones, which other decks would use to enable big link plays. In Sky Strikers themselves, helps consistency. In other decks, sets up 4 to 5 negates on turn 1. Pokemon, on the other hand, bans Pokemon on their ranked ladder and VGC based entirely on popularity. They banned the 16 most used Pokemon in singles and doubles. I disagree with this method entirely. Something can be widely used, but not overpowered. With specific regards to Pokemon, I'll use Gen 4 Heatran as an example. Strong? Absolutely. Impossible to deal with? Absolutely not. It had mediocre speed and weakness to three of the most common offensive types. But by the way Pokemon implemented its ban list, this thing would be on there.
Even after Game Freak pinched out a ban list to spice up an otherwise stagnant and boring metagame, Pokemon tends to lean towards only a handful of Pokemon being meta at any given time. Most every game does this, it's unavoidable. Difference, I would argue, is the gap between most viable and least viable. Yu-Gi-Oh! tends to have a much greater variety in available archetypes used than Pokemon has viable mons. I've won tournaments in Yu-Gi-Oh! with Toons, an archetype that has never been considered even remotely a rogue strategy. In Pokemon, if I use my favorites, it ends horribly. My favorites are the Kanto and Johto Pokemon, which have largely been power crept into obscurity. Why would I use Dragonite when Garchomp is available? This is largely curbed in Yu-Gi-Oh!, and again I'll use Toons as an example. They've never been competitive since inception due to being so easily crippled by losing Toon World. Sure, they've got some support like Toon Kingdom and Toon Bookmark to help things out, but they've otherwise never been anything close to meta. Fortunately, Yu-Gi-Oh! has a myriad of generic support that can help any deck. The various hand traps alone can help prop up weaker archetypes and allow them to compete with the bigger ones. Now, obviously, it is much harder to win with weaker archetypes as opposed to, say, dinosaurs. My win record with dinos is much better than with toons, but it's still very possible to win with what is considered outside the meta, whereas with Pokemon, you can afford maybe one non-meta niche pick for your team that likely you won't even use. I'm going to harp on the grind again, one, because I'm writing this script over a couple of days here and there, and two, because I really, really hate grind. In Pokemon, you want to get your stats to a competitive level? Start grinding random battles. Or you can just buy the vitamins with money you get from grinding in-game battles. You want good IVs for a Pokemon? Start grinding egg breeding. Or you can level them up to 100 and use a bottle cap by grinding levels and BP. You want a hidden ability? Start grinding raid dens. Or you can use that new item from Crown Tundra that you get by grinding raid dens. See where I'm going with this? Yu-Gi-Oh, like I said, doesn't have this. You buy the card and wait for it to come in the mail at worst if you're smart about your spending. And if it sucks and doesn't work out, well, you sell it. Will you take a slight financial hit? Sure. But this is Yu-Gi-Oh, which is probably the cheapest out of the TCGs to buy into. But I'll leave personal finances to you, all I'm going to say is I don't mind spending 30 bucks for a few staple cards that can be run in any deck with a bunch of cards worth less than a quarter. From there, it's not the same mindless and repetitive grinding basic game mechanics to get better at the game. It's study and experience with it. I've seen many players come back to the game after 10 years break, myself included, be able to win tournaments against guys who have been playing the game for the last 5 plus years because they've taken the time to study up and learn the game. Not saying Pokemon doesn't require that, but Pokemon requires the study and the grind. Now, there, there's definitely more that I could go into, but uh, I'm kind of trying to piecemeal this uh, script and video together over the course of uh, several days, a couple weeks, in fact, just in between work, you know, what I'm doing here. Uh, so, I will say, I'm definitely, I, I'm definitely not totally done-done with Pokemon, obviously. I mean, that, that game has been, I mean, I've been playing that game since, shoot, I was younger than my kid. So, it's, it's always going to have that little nostalgia cook for me, so they'll, they'll release something and I'll get back into it, but it'll, I, I foresee it only being for, like, a couple months or so. Like, I got Crown Tundra, I haven't even bothered to beat it. Well, I don't think it's considered beat. I beat the uh, the the Calyrex storyline, and then I was just like, all right, we're done. Let's uh, let's go back to Yu-Gi-Oh. But uh, aside from that, like I said at the beginning of the video and the on the opening, uh, if you're watching this on the Mr. Snow channel and you want some more Yu-Gi-Oh specific content, head over to Lawrence e Y G O Lawrence Y G O. Simple as that. Lawrence space Y G O. Uh, that's where all my uh, remote dual locals and some other content are going to be posted up, uh, deck profiles, videos like this where I'm just kind of talking about a subject. And if you are more interested in general video game, general movie talk, uh, critique, stuff like that, head over to Mr. Snow. That's all I have for you all today. Have a good one.